Hi there, this is Jim the Keats bartender coming to you from Key Largo. Um, it is August the 2nd. Normally don't do a Sunday show, but uh, it's episode 311. We've, uh, probably if you're listening to my shows on Tuesday, we're talking about the mini season coming up. It was busy out there. It was, uh, we're in the Keys. The weather was okay. Um, the big weather news was, I don't even know how to pronounce the, uh, hurricane. I, I see us, I see us, I say us, hurricane high see us, uh, which missed us by like 80 miles. And, uh, as the time of the podcast right now, 20 of two is, somewhere on its way to Daytona Beach and uh, wishing everyone well up in those areas in the path of it. I don't know if it's strengthened back to category one, but it's interesting down here after living down here 13 years, being through uh, just one hurricane, a direct hit, and a uh, a bunch of misses where you get prepared for it. You you really don't worry about things until they're all the tracks start going up through there. And we remember we we always go back to Irma. Irma was uh, one of the ones it was in 2017. And that was just, you know, in the middle of the keys, the line stayed there and they've been getting really good with that. I mean, obviously, a hurricane's a hurricane, and you can't account for all the things that are weather. But they're they get some, you know, they get, you know, may stay off the coast, may go in the coast. They got a general idea where it's going, so I got a handle to them. And I used to, when something like that happened, I would run out and put up the shutters and stuff like that. But now I just wait and give myself twenty four hours to see what's happening. And it, um, I didn't put up the shutters yet, but it's still. Uh, I guess mid-season, we have the rest of August and September and uh, October. Um, it doesn't really end until the end of October. So we've got another three months and we're already up to I. And remember when we hit, uh, when Irma hit us, that was in September 9th, around that September 10th. So we're uh, about five, six weeks ahead of that. Um on the, you know, Isaiah, Isaiah. So hopefully we won't go through the whole alphabet, but there's two ones turning out there. And at the bar I work at, we had uh, this weekend, uh, it wasn't that busy. I guess a lot of people decided that this wasn't the place to be because they weren't sure what was coming. And the graphics of it, if you watch a lot of the bars, when there's a hurricane brewing, you know, people want to know, when, you know, the updates and the new tracks and things like that. So they put it on their TVs. And since there's no big sporting events going on right now, other than some uh, baseball and hockey, and uh, I don't know if the hockey's on right now, but uh, basketball, that uh, that's a big thing right now, watching the course of the storm. So these people see the big red dot coming their way. They're not saying, hey, let's go down the Keys. You know, they got one road, you know, one road out of there. That's the place to be. So, nope, they, we weren't, we weren't busy at all. And it was after the, um, you heard there was a lot of bitching going on about the lobster mini season. Not to be confused with the uh, mini lobster season. People put the, the word order is important. You, you know, one of our listeners uh, here, uh, Keith, one of the fans of the show, he um, introduced me to his ex-Cuban girlfriend, not uh, his ex-girlfriend who was Cuban. So it's mini lobster season or lobster mini season, whatever the lobster mini season, but it's Florida lobster and they have a two day from, you know, two day window where they can go out and grab six lobsters per person, per boat, per day. And uh, you hear all about that. And, you know, it's funny. I I used to think that it was the exception rather than a rule uh, that people 
um, would abuse the limits uh, of the numbers of lobsters they got. But it turns out a lot of people take more than six a day. So I don't know. But it wasn't it wasn't that crazy busy in the in the restaurants. We had a little uptick on Thursday, a tiny bit on Friday, and you know everyone left because of the the approaching storm, which is now going north. But uh, you know you can't account for the weather and uh, people's behavior. So on another thing, I want to be, send a uh, I don't even know I'm not going to do it. Uh, yeah, it's a shout out, Washington, Virginia. Uh, I don't get it. The, uh, I get my different, I get my numbers for the podcast. When you're listening to uh, podcasts and you say, how does people, how do people know the podcast or know where it, where the people are, where, where I bring it up. And, you know, it's not that the people are contacted. Most people are shy. So you need thousands and thousands of people to listen to start getting people to actually call in. Well, I guess they got to know it's live too. So they don't know it's live. You can actually chat with me now if you wanted to. We have that. I'm going to see if anybody wants to chat. I'll post that. Um, You can actually chat. Let me see. Chat. Chat. Uh, That's more of a text feature. I'm not putting it up on the phones because my daughter has um, friends here. And I don't know what kind of conversation could occur even though I try to do keep it uh, I put explicit so you could throw out the F notes and all sorts of weird shit that you do but the mini lobster season so people take there's all sorts of things people can abuse that they can take too small lobsters they get too 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 many lobsters they could go within the uh, limit there's a 300 foot uh, I guess uh, uh, range you have to stay outside of any improved structure near the shore so you can't just go up on people's houses and stuff like that or on the beach where uh, our beaches down here are mainly rocky coral uh, beaches very few sand beaches it's like you ever hear that term you know taking uh, someone to a party it's like bringing sand to the beach or something like that well if you're coming to the beach in uh the keys you better bring sand to the beach or go to one of the ones that have the few that have uh sand and uh so what was i on here we were talking about washington virginia and how people listen and uh we're talking about the many scenes i got sidetracked so fucking quick it's amazing uh that um there has been approximately 30 episodes per resident downloads in the city of Washington, Virginia, not Washington, D.C., which is an extraterritorial uh, uh, land that's wholly surrounded by Maryland and Virginia, with the Potomac being a cutoff. Um, Washington, Virginia is actually a small town, not Washington, D.C., so don't be confused with that. They've had thousands of downloads so there's several options right there with washington virginia it's either um, an intelligent organization we don't know about maybe the nsa or someone has a little you know operation there maybe it's their internet uh thing going where they follow people and try to get it for enemies of the state uh and then there's uh Another theory is a group of podcasters studying on what not to do. That would be a good one. I don't. I, I really wouldn't want to be case studying on what not to do. Uh, a unpopular idea would be an obsessed fan. So, an obsessed fan who never contacts me from Washington, Virginia, which would that's kind of interesting. Anybody would download that. Someone who has thirty separate devices. So they download every episode that I've created, which is 370-something if you count the ones on my extras channel. So that's that's a lot. That's over – that's 300, about 300 um, hours worth of content, which – 
approaches two solid weeks of just listening to me drone on about bullshit. Uh, there's how about um, someone who bets someone else in Western Virginia and say, hey, listen, there's this podcaster in the Florida Keys, Key Largo in particular, and if I download all these episodes, he's going to mention, mention us, Washington, Virginia, which all those things are perfectly fine with me. Not so much the intelligence organization, because I don't think, if they're listening, I hope, you know, I hope they're considerate. And, you know, we are, we're still in the United States, so we can say whatever we want, as long as it's not threatening somebody, right? At least I thought it was. But, uh, as I said, the uh, lobster mini season wasn't a big deal. Uh, we didn't have any lunch over. We had people come in. We had a couple people come in with fish. Not too many. Now we do a cook your own catch. Uh, cook your own catch, meaning we'll cook your catch. You don't come in and cook at our place, our catch. But uh, we've had some people come bring their own fish, but we didn't have anybody bring in their own lobster because it seems like lobster people store that and, uh, you know, take it, maybe freeze it, or maybe they, you know, they're renting a place or grilling, they grill at their own place because lobster is very easy to, to catch. So uh, very easy to cook, let's say, once you get the knack. So we had that, and it wasn't, and we, you could see this wear and tear on the people that are coming in there. They just want to be able to come into a bar and talk to people and hang out there, but we don't have, in the state of Florida, the bars aren't open and people are really not supposed to. We're only doing table service. So we put the tables up against the bar. You can actually, a lot of other bars, I guess, because code enforcement are coming in, they're just marking out the areas and going, you know, using their bars. But uh, I have a tendency to think if they really wanted to get you on the specifics, if you're providing bar service, then that's a bar. Then people would have to eat and all that stuff when they're there and not just have a drink. So what we do is we have these tables and people get really, really nitpicking, even though the tables are right up on the bar. I mean, they're just abutting the bar, but they're sitting at a table. And that's all I, we ask people to do. This way they stay there and they stay six feet apart. And if people are together, then... And we're starting to see more people that have had uh, the... Uh, virus. There was a young guy, I guess he's in his upper 20s, and he was down for the count for about, not too bad, maybe four or five days. And, uh, you know, it's just, they, he came back, uh, I guess he was clean for about two weeks. I hope he was. He said he had two negative tests, so I assume they were. So uh, they're they're fine. But we're still getting the people in. They, I mean, it seems like it's as if people were going to go out right now, the people that are afraid or uh, let's say afraid, wary of catching the virus and they're concerned for the health of themselves and for their family, you know, they're, they're, they're thinking other them, themselves. Uh, they're staying away. They're doing a lot of takeout. They're staying home. They're doing, they see friends. They remain distant. Now there's people that are vested in uh, not believing it's real because they just want to go out. And the people that had the son that was ill, they, they were those people. They thought it was bullshit. And whenever I mentioned someone died, they go, what was the underlying thing? And uh, what was the underlying lying condition that killed them? Well, some people die just from, you know, having congestion in the lungs and, you know, the heart stopped and all sorts of things, strokes brought on by COVID-19. Um, and some people have diabetes, o- obesity, uh, some e- immune uh, system disorder, and you can't do that. But, you know, if it's the virus kills them, the virus kills them. Just like if you have cancer. Let's say you have stage four cancer and or stage three, whatever, and you're walking down the street and you cross the road and you get hit by a car. You know, you could have been dying in a week and a half, two weeks and stuff like that. But... The car killed you. That was the thing that killed you. Now, you may eventually die, died from cancer. You may eventually die from diabetes. You may eventually die from thing. But, you know, 
whatever puts you in a hospital and kills you is, is the coronavirus. So people get hung up, you know, about this motorcycle thing. I mean, they, they always point, they always point to a motorcycle. You know, when you're talking about tracking hundreds of thousands of people, there are people probably, and you're going to hear here, probably make misdiagnosed as uh, dying of COVID-19, maybe a few, but there's probably a ton of people that died that never got tested. So let's say you, you, you don't know, you, you don't, you don't have the, you, we have a couple, I'm sure we have my, uh, person per person. If they were able to do a test on it, they were able to match it up. Probably even more people that died and weren't diagnosed with it. So there's strokes, heart attacks and things like that, where people died of it. And then, you know, they get all hung up on that. But these people, they don't, worry about that. Let's say like that. I'm going to say that. I don't want to say they don't care. They don't worry about it. They don't believe it's a big deal. They know they wear the mask because they know they have to now. They've done their arguments. They've done their wildcatting where they come in and want to be uh, conflicted with you. So, you know, get into a debate. So they're done. So they're all coming out. And they're all saying the same thing. They're talking about hydrochloroquine and zinc and stuff like that, even though, I mean, they roll out a couple doctors who, you know, a pediatrician, I mean, some, yeah, they got some wacky beliefs and stuff like that, and they'll say, well, there's not enough money, they don't make enough money from hydro, hydrochloroquine and zinc, so, you know, the patent's out on it, so, you you know, uh, a pharmaceutical company, a pharmaceutical, so the whole world's shutting down for different pharmaceutical companies. Now, if the industries are racing to do it, one's going to be a big winner. Some others, there's going to be other winners too, and there's going to be losers. Why would a pharmaceutical company try to chase down something, spend lots of money, and not be the winner in the producer of a vaccine? So, no, it would have to be one company because of our system. It's funny how people that give the biggest breaks to corporations and say corporations are people, right? When things come around, they say corporations are developing these, you know, so, so if it's not to their liking, they're going to say a corporation is driving this. I mean, if you think about the argument from 20 years ago, corporations have a right to free speech, meaning corporate, there was a ruling by the Supreme court that, you know, corporations are people too. And they're, they have the right to a political voice. So now they're saying that corporations are the instigator of uh, the virus and they're driving the uh, concern and the uh, yeah, yeah, mask, masking and social distancing and washing your hands does not help Pfizer. Pfizer, no, Pfizer will make money when it comes to uh, the uh, you know they'll get they'll make money when it comes to the vaccine and stuff like that. They may be, they may give them money for it and stuff like that. But you know you gotta you gotta vaccinate everyone. So they cannot they can't do that bullshit where they say it's going to be like five hundred dollars a person. They can't. They're going to be you know they're going to set a price. The government's going to come in there. If someone says they try to make it five hundred dollars a person. Go say okay, nope, that's not going to happen. And we're going to take it. This is a national emergency. You do and I have control over the patent. We're going to be farming this out to Kaiser Permanente and all these different companies. Uh, I don't even know if Kaiser Permanente is a farm. Uh, let's say Purdue, Purdue Pharma. So that's enough of that. But the, these people have been out. So we have a lot of people that are a lot of conspiracy theorists. And we have the, my old friend that comes into uh the bar and he's a, he calls himself a Rastafarian when it comes to mushrooms and stuff like that so whenever he talks about his religion I like to bring up uh, something about my religion which I'll make up at the time and he says I'm making fun of him and I said no I'm a Hasidic Lutheran and but the new one was a reformed modernist uh, Amish 
whatever he says. He can't have mushrooms or shellfish or something like that. It's because he's Rastafarian. And I said, well, listen, I, there's a lot of things I, I can't do because of my religion. And he goes, what is that? And I go, we're for modernist Amish. He goes, you work in a bar. I said, we're different. We're modernists. We point, you know, we're so different. We're modernists. So we pointedly refuse to ride in a carriage and horses. So only use, uh, we only use electric vehicles now. Uh, they are, we only have the, uh, you know, churning milk and all that stuff. We only use the most current kitchen gadgets. The men, when they're fully a, 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 uh, initiated into the religion, they're, uh, they grow handlebar mustaches. They can look like they're one of these craft bartenders from Seattle. But uh, that's, you know, that that's one of the reform Amish. Uh, rum springing, that's the uh, period between when someone's a child, when they're a teenager and before they're a full adult inside the reform Amish community. The, in rum springing, in a regular Amish community, they're allowed to go and do whatever they want. They go out there, they drink, they f- get girlfriends outside the community and things like that. But, uh, and, and sometimes they buy cars and they park it in their neighbors. Uh, they rent out space in neighbors' barns and stuff like that. Uh, and sometimes they get in trouble. But the rum springing for the reform office, because we're pretty much open to everything like marijuana, drinking, and things like that, dating, that their rum springing is uh, the reverse. So instead of going back, we we are kind of touchy with the Amish. So, But we're allowed, we have some association rights with the fundamentalist Mormons. So we will send, we'll send uh, the uh, guys there, not the girls, because the reform there, if you send the girls there, they'll end up being a child bride. So you got to be careful with the fundamentalist Mormons. Well, we do send the guys. And they'll always, and because they always have too many guys, fundamentalists, they always send, the, send our boys back. You know what I mean? Because they're all, they, they all believe in plural marriage. And since children, women are born in the same, you know, around 50% of the time as men, that they end up with like two-thirds of the guys are expelled from their community. So we're almost sure they're never going to accept them. So that's a good one. That's how we keep everyone in line. And when it comes to black and white uh, clothing, you can only wear all black or all white. So you either look like a ninja or a uh, one of those turn-of-the-century evangelists that wears all white. You know, that, that and, uh, when it comes to buttons, uh, we're, we're anti-button. We're more zipper. So almost everything zipper that you can get a hold of. We decided to eschew buttons. And uh, for not too many, there's no really dietary requirements except that uh, there's one quirky thing that they found in our uh, religion was we don't shell our nuts, meaning we eat them whole. So that's thought that's thought in our religion that builds character and strong jaws. So we try in Tennessee, most people just stick to you know peanuts. Because walnuts and uh, hazelnuts and all that stuff are a little really rough on the teeth, uh, but we do believe in uh, modern uh, dentistry, so that's always a plus. For if you if you were thinking about finding yourself a new, a new religion, that uh, reformist modernist Amish may be the way for you. Uh, not so plain, but uh, you know, pretty exciting and cutting edge, and. Uh, you can find us on TikTok and Instagram. So recently, I've been noticing the, uh, I think it's the last 10 years. When it comes to installment payments, if you see one of these online gadgets, uh, online gadgets or television, it uh, used to be the set it, forget it, rotisserie uh, thing. And they, you know, because people didn't want to shell out 129 bucks. At one time, they make it three easy payments of forty forty three dollars and stuff, and no no uh, no shipping charge or something like that, or with shipping charge. But recently, I seen a bar has it, it, I've been seeing those for at least twenty years, twenty five years, where they'd have they'd break out the payments to be like twenty four ninety nine, twenty nineteen ninety five. Now. I know just recently that we're in a deep recession 
because the crap they're selling now, which is different from the crap they sold 20 years ago, it's just different crap. Um, it's a it's a, ta- a, a tower for charging your phones and things. It's a circular tower, and you plug it. It has a a coiled, extended uh, four foot cord where you can plug it in, and you can plug in your cell phones and. Uh, it has USB hookups and stuff like that. It's black and white or black and silver or something like that. And it looks horrendous, meaning like you would put this plastic monstrosity in the middle of your room. I mean, it does it does something cool with the, the charging, which you could do with a power strip underneath, you know. But this thing has things where you hold your phone and you put your notebooks or your... your, your um, iPad, all that stuff. I almost said uh, iPod. Like, who the fuck has an iPod anymore? But here they are. They're doing it two instead of twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. They're doing two or something like that. Two twelve dollar and ninety five cent payments. That is the bar. Now this is twenty years. So twenty years ago, that would be something like eight dollars, seven dollars. I mean, if you can't afford to shout, if you have so many electronic items, so many electronic items that you need a central location to plug in eight of them, wouldn't it be stand to reason that you would have $26 to purchase this thing? And why would you as, I mean, I'm thinking about the logic behind it. Why would the company want to break it up and have to collect unless the item, the first payment pays for it and brings a healthy profit, right? And you get to return it and they get to get the payment and they may be able to sell it again. Who knows? It looks like it would hold up pretty good. Just my theory. I mean, why Why would you send it's a, it's a, it? It's It does serve a utility, but if you have... Come on, even cheap electronics. If you have to plug in eight different things, and let's say cheap electronics about a hundred dollars a piece, that's eight hundred bucks. You can't charge. You you can't spend twenty six bucks or thirty bucks or whatever ridiculous amount of money on that thing. And I'm not saying it's worth spending that money on. I'm just saying it's very strange to break into two installments on. A thing they try to make sound like essential, but it seems like they're selling crappier items in multi installment, and that kind of makes me think that there's a room in, let's say, commercials. Maybe, maybe commercial television is losing the streaming service, and now we're we're just seeing commercials that aren't that hot. If you just think of the Super Bowl, people aren't spending a lot of time in commercials. How long? How long is the longest commercial you ever watched? There's been two-minute commercials. There's probably been four-minute commercials years ago. They just make them into kind of a trying to make it entertainment. Nowadays, if you're on the Internet and you're getting something for free, let's say a game or something like that, they make you see, listen to uh, a 15-second pitch. Or they give you, yeah, they give you 15 seconds and you skip out of the end. Or they even lock you up to show you another game for 30 seconds. But that's their... They're pitching their own items right there. So who knows? But it just seems like when I saw that, and it's a Bell and Hal charger station, I thought, oh, my God, we must really be fucked right now. So how do we uh, cover and stuff like that? We got obsessed fans. We have bar seats and got bar staff. We got arguing with the people now. What are we going to argue about today? I mean, how long? Do, how long do you can, can you disagree with someone in close quarters that come in to see you at at your place of work? Uh, God, I mean, I'd hate to be in a customer service situation where someone could just sit there and spout whatever they want all the time and not have any recourse. I mean, if I I've had to have people. Uh, probably go and talk to my manager because I, I didn't get along with him uh, several times. But that's over the course of what, 
15 years. Yeah, 15 years. That's not too bad. I mean, I had five people. That's thousands and thousands of people. So most of the time, I either kept my mouth shut, nodded, and a couple of times I couldn't. Like when the guy used the N-word at the bar. I told that if you're an avid listener, guy came up with, with a friend of mine I used to work with, a woman who was a bartender. She came in with a, uh, another couple and this gentleman sat at a bar at the bar I worked at uh, a couple of years ago called the Encore here in Key Largo. And he sat down, looked around, started telling a joke, and he used the N-word twice. I caught him the first time, but I was um, cashing out a check. And it happened within one minute, and he did it twice. Uh, and by the time I was able to get over there and I just said, Hey, stop it. Not right now. Stop. You just, I had two of my friends and one happens to uh, Jamaican, the other's African American. And I go, they're, they're right at the end of the bar. And even if they weren't at the end of the bar, I just, I, I didn't know what to, uh, first of all, when someone's in their fifties and they're doing something like that, it's not something new. They've been doing it for years. But this guy apologized, said he'll never do it again. I looked at him and says, not only do you do it all the time, you will do it again. You didn't learn your lesson because I told you here. You know? I mean, the only lesson would have been, like, if I took him out, just, you know, in front of everyone, just threw him out the door. You know? And then it would be my word against his word and these other people and stuff like that. But they, they were apologizing. He never came back in again. Um... No, they, they're not, you're not going to, you're not going to teach someone when you get a debate. When someone believes something reprehensible or not based on fact, there's very little that you're going to be able to do at the par. I try to remember that. It's really hard to listen to it uh, and not have a response. But, uh, and sometimes, sometimes you have to have it for you, you know, for your own sanity. Just say, listen, nope. Um, just, I just, I, not that it may change your life or something. I just don't want you to think from me being quiet that I'm acquiescing to your crazy bullshit, you know? So that, that's the thing. That's the thing. And, uh, um, I, I don't believe I don't have, uh, big sponsors or anything. I don't believe that. It's because of my viewpoint. I think it's because of my list, you know, level of listenership to the show right now. Um, eventually, I may not have sponsors because of my viewpoints, but that's not that's not the reason now. So, I mean, the, let's put the cart before the horse. The nice thing about having your viewpoints out in the open. They're not going to be shocked by it when it comes out. He says, do you believe he believes that every per- person in the United States is one person, one vote? Uh, do you believe that there should be mail-in voting? Yes. Do you believe he uh, believes that um, you know, uh, uh, white supremacist groups and the KKK and the American Nazi Party and all these stuff are so terrorist groups? You know, he believes it. Yeah, he does. So it's not something you're going to find out later. They're not going to find out later. They're not, it's no secret what I think about the current guy at the, uh, 600 uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, and no matter whatever cockamamie story you get from uh, Breitbart or uh, Drudge or uh, America, One American News or Rush Limbaugh will not convince me. Or... Uh, the guy with the bow tie. Uh, the, I've seen him before. The guy with the bow tie too. And I forget about the guy on Fox. He's he's just a, he is what he is. And the people that listen to him listen to him for a reason. And um, <coughs> I happen to believe the news stories. That's why I watch the weather forecast. If you don't believe the media, and currently they're entertaining the idea not to have any media in the uh, Republican convention. So they believe all media is fake. So all the media is fake. So that means a journalist who does their job reporting news is detrimental to their message. Because they don't want to be pointed out. But like I said, I appreciate whoever it is in Washington, Virginia, even if it's a 
National Security Agency, obsessed fan, uh, old girlfriend. Uh, there are no uh, or former girlfriend. I mean, I do have. I, I there was a woman I dated. I was about ten years older than me, so she'd be she'd be about sixty six right now. But I, uh, well, I did remember her name. I was going to say I don't even remember her name. I did. I dated her for a couple of weeks. Uh, but I'm sure she doesn't remember her name. She must have made a lot of mistakes uh, since then. Oh, I was one of the mistakes. I, I realize that. Uh, but I want to thank you for listening. Uh, thank everyone in Washington, Virginia. And uh, India. There's a lot of decent listenership in India right now. Um, I realize that there's a lot of uh, people that speak English. And I appreciate that. And uh, I don't have a problem with people working the customer service uh, phones for that. That's a price of doing business. People get upset that customer service is in another country. What's the difference if it's in another country or down the street? Right? If they're in a house next to you and you're calling them, if they help you, they help you. If they don't help you, they don't help you. And that's what effective customer service does. Customer service gets your message passed to the line that needs to go or they fix the problem that you need fixed. So, where does it matter where it's from? Yes, jobs. Who's going to take a job in a customer service? And who's, who do you think you're going to be able to uh, do a decent at a job like that? I mean, there's probably some, there's probably some very high-end customer service jobs for exclusive people, like one of those uh, American Express black uh, you know, diamond cards. Uh, the customer service there is probably something like an $80,000 a year job. I hope it is. And that would suck if it wasn't. Uh, it sounds like you're a top-rated concierge there at American Express. So, oh, and they're never going to they're never gonna advertise with me. I, and I, I don't know. Maybe not. I have a problem with their fee structure and all that stuff and how they charge, uh, of, you know, uh, merchants and things like that. But, uh... I can be bought for a minimum amount of money right now. So I won't sell. I mean, I do believe in the use of credit cards intelligently. So that's it for me this week. I appreciate you listening. I am going to be doing two shows on Tuesday. I got to get ready for work and you take care until then. Bye.